Hey guys, before this video gets started, I just wanted to thank you for tuning in and watching and subscribing if you have subscribed. This video will most likely be demonetized because of the honest discussion on steroids. So if you like this content and you want to support my channel, please head over to my Patreon where you can donate just $1 a month and that will go a long way in helping me produce more and more content for you guys. As for the audio, this is a recording of a transcription from the interview I did with Greg Everett of Catalyst Athletics. We talked about a multitude of topics, but this particular discussion on steroids was fascinating to me, and I feel Greg's take on it was very refreshing. As strong as Greg feels about doping in sport, it seems to me that he has taken the time to see both sides of the spectrum, the motives for drug use, and the problems outside of the athlete's control. So without further ado, I present to you Drugs in Weightlifting by Greg Everett. I think that every coach wants to produce a world champion or a world record holder. No one wants to stop short of that, but you certainly have to temper your expectations. In the current climate of disparate drug use among many countries, it's a really frustrating position to be in. And the reality is that most of the countries that participate in weightlifting at the international level think that countries like the US and the UK and Canada are all really stupid for not using drugs. They think, why bother? You'll never win. And that very well may be true. I know a number of international coaches who are honestly at a loss as to how to train a natural weightlifter. Not that they are bad coaches in any way, it's just that if you spend decades of coaching lifters who are on drugs, that is how all of your programming and all of your expectations are built. And so let's say that coach then runs into a drug-free athlete, especially one who wasn't recruited at a young age and someone who hasn't gone through a systematic development over time, you know, to be really well suited and prepared for weight training. It's a really complicated and different game. So we look at that and there's definitely a sense of pride among a lot of American coaches because they say, hey, look, we're working with whoever walks through our door. There are some coaches in the US who are active recruiters, but they are pretty few and far between. It's a difficult job because there are avenues that really talented athletes can go down in the US, which offer the potential for anything from professional paychecks to whole scholarships. Whereas weightlifting coaches can guarantee you a lifetime of poverty. So we're working with anyone who walks through our door most of the time, and yeah, maybe they're not particularly well suited for the sport. I have a 48 kilo lifter who's taller than my 58 and my 53 kilo lifter, but she's comfortably 48 kilos. That's just the way she was built. I don't have the luxury of going, you're never going to be that great because you're too tall for the body you're able to carry, so beat it. No, I'm going to do everything I can to make her as good as possible with what I have to work with. It's extremely frustrating to have to deal with hearing people say, well, you know, the Americans don't know anything about weightlifting and they should be doing this and they should be doing that. And yet none of them will admit that drugs have anything to do with it. And so there's this weird deal where drug users really, really dramatically downplay how effective drugs are and how much they influence their performance. And the non-drug users kind of attribute all of the success to the drugs. Certainly there's some in-between space there. I mean, an elite world championship level weightlifter on drugs is still a phenomenal athlete. You don't take a terrible athlete, inject them with stenozolol and break a world record. It's not magic, but certainly if you have two equal naturally talented lifters, one clean and one on drugs, it's pretty obvious who's gonna come out ahead. Sometimes you can't win because if you talk about drug use, you're a whiner who's making excuses for not being as good as everyone else. But of course, people calling you a whiner have no dog in the fight. This is coming from anonymous people on Reddit or some shit who've never competed at a high level or who've never coached at a high level. All they wanna see is ridiculous clean and jerks at the world championships. It doesn't affect their lives in any way to have people knowingly take drugs and cheating the system, whereas for a coach like me or for an athlete like Kendrick Ferris, it is a huge deal. That same crowd will likely say, oh, stop whining about drug use, you just don't know how to coach. And I think it's been fascinating in the past few years when you see more and more elite Asian and European lifters getting their Instagram accounts, showing the world the way they do things and having it align perfectly with what some American coaches are teaching. 
There aren't secrets. There aren't any magic spells that these athletes and coaches have that puts them head and shoulders above us. And so at some point you have to stop fighting it and just accept the fact. Again, this is not saying that if someone is on drugs, they are not a good athlete and that they don't work hard. Of course they are great athletes. Of course they work hard. They work just as hard as their clean counterparts, but they have an advantage that cannot be surpassed. I would argue that in order to reach that level, the absolute top, you have to have everything in line. You have to be training as well as possible. You have to be recovering as well as possible. Then when you add drugs on top of that, you are essentially unstoppable. So if you pick someone, say, at the national level and you introduce drugs to that program, then certainly you will get people who are out drinking all night, who live on pizza and Safeway cookies, and will still beat out the clean athlete, working his or her ass off. But if you take it to the absolute top, they are doing it all right. These are the athletes that are truly, totally dedicated to the sport. The US is a very puritanical country when it comes to this. Drugs are bad. It's a very black and white thing where if you use drugs, you're a cheater and you suck. You're going to hell. If you go and speak to, say, an Eastern European lifter, it's completely different. It's a very acceptable thing. Like, it's not a weird thing where they're hush-hush about it. They all know. No one cares. To a point you can't hold it against them too much because that's the mindset. If I want to be a competitive athlete, I want to win. Legitimately. I would rather not quite win and know that the work that I put in was totally legitimate and that I did as well as I could according to the rules of the sport. Versus, well yeah, I've beat the shit out of these guys because I've been on stenozolol for the past 15 years and these guys are trying to scrape pennies out of their couch just to buy creatine. The thing is though, it's not going to change. I'll put it that way. They're changing the weight classes, but it will never change. There will always be doping in sport. If there is money, if there is pride, if there is recognition on the line, there will always be doping. Take the US where we have legitimate testing, where we have frequent testing, and where we have stringent testing. Are there American weightlifters on drugs? Absolutely. They are a small fraction of the total though. But the same people who are going to use drugs as weightlifters are going to use them whether they're testing or not. The people who most likely will not use drugs are going to not use them whether they're testing or not. So I don't think testing makes it unfair by preventing American athletes from being on drugs. I think it's, again, more of a cultural thing. And that's not some moral superiority kind of thing, because I think that the puritanical mindset of the US is really quite silly. Here's what I wish. I wish that we would have testing that was effective. That would be the number one. But number two, if that people would just be forthcoming about what they were doing and what they have done, I would be very satisfied. If someone would just say, I'm a world champion, this is my exact drug regimen from when I was age 16. Because then at least we would have an honest discussion about it and we wouldn't have to be wasting time trying to convince people that certain lifters are on drugs or drugs don't actually confer a benefit. And that's a funny thing too, is when people say that drugs don't help that much. So you're telling me people are willing to risk a lifetime ban, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines, getting banned from the world championships because drugs just don't work that well? Give me a break, of course they work well. Here's how I deal with it. I do my best to put my focus and my energy into my real daily life. You know, taking care of my weightlifters and making them as good as I possibly can help them be. The fact is, the reason I do this stuff is because I actually like it, and as frustrating and as thankless and as absolutely soul-crushing as it can be, there's still something extremely appealing about it to me. I guess it's a little bit of a head-in-the-sand kind of mentality, but if I can just avoid thinking about that stuff, I can actually enjoy what I'm doing day to day. So that's pretty much my solution to every frustration I have, is just to focus on what I can control which, in the grand scheme of things, is actually quite a lot. I can be frustrated by it, but I can also enjoy watching those lifters and talking to them and respect everything else they're doing outside of that in respect to their accomplishments. It doesn't have to be one or the other, in my opinion. It doesn't completely ruin my life. It just makes things a little more stressful and frustrating. But then again, what doesn't make life more stressful or frustrating?